Have you ever spent hours and hours of your time handcrafting the perfect video, then excitedly uploading it, only to be left reloading the page wondering why it's not gained any views? I'm a professional video editor with over 250 million views to my name, and having gained access to a circle of genius YouTubers with millions of subscribers, what if I told you going viral is a science? A science that you can master. First, we're gonna need a killer idea. In exchange for your video going viral, YouTube wants you to create videos and then package them in a way that keeps the viewer watching for as long as possible, which is measured by what's called a retention graph. This is simply so that YouTube can make the maximum amount of money from ads on your videos. This means that we're going to need to put a lot of emphasis on finding a good viral video idea. Me and my team spend like 10 times more time than everyone else brainstorming ideas. In my head, it's like, why would you not watch it? And to do that, it's time for me to throw a curveball at you copying is not bad. Blatantly ripping off ideas is frowned upon, but taking inspiration from somewhere and putting your spin on it is literally what every single YouTuber does. And it's not why you'd think. Taking inspiration from an idea that's already been proven to work eliminates that variable from the long list of things that could go wrong and stop your video from becoming viral. Ultimately, it puts you a step closer towards virality. Once we've found our viral idea, it's so important that we structure our video correctly. 99% of YouTube videos follow the same storytelling structure. And this structure is what sets apart a messy video that falls flat on its face from videos that explode into virality as soon as they're posted. It's simple, set up, problem resolution. You may have realized, even throughout this very video, which isn't the type of video you'd think of when we mention storytelling, I firstly set up the video by telling you why I'm qualified to speak on this, then I raised the problem of your videos not going viral, and then I'll be shifting from problem to resolution until the final resolution right at the very end of the video, and the problem you had in your mind when you clicked onto this video is resolved. Regardless, sticking to this storytelling structure and maintaining a feeling of mystery throughout will help your next video go viral. Now, we've got the idea and the structure nailed, let's get started with the best bit, the introduction. The intro is the most important part, so how do we create a gripping intro in a world where people's attention spans are shorter than ever? When you upload a video, you're fighting for attention with tons of other YouTube videos, as well as every other piece of content on every other app. It can make or break whether viewers get bored and click off or watch your full video and become diehard fans. There are so many sneaky tactics massive YouTubers use to hook you that we can also use within our videos. The first off is what's called a scroll stopper. This is simply something eye-catching in the first few seconds of a video, which snaps the viewer out of autopilot and captures their attention. For example, MrBeast uses a blurred zoom effect. Then for the entire intro, MrBeast uses insanely fast cuts to not allow the viewer even a second to get bored. The constant stimulation keeps them hooked. As a key rule, you want your intro snappy and engaging. You can alternate between A-roll and B-roll. A-roll being your main footage, for example, a talking head video, and B-roll being extra videos or images that you can throw in to spice things up and keep things interesting. I find B-roll images and videos on Canva, stock video sites like Pexels and Unsplash, or by screenshotting articles, for example. The B-roll must add context to whatever is being spoken about however. Now, speaking of adding context, we can also use subtitles to capture attention and emphasize key points of our videos. The YouTube genius Tommy in it does this incredibly well, using text on screen to almost force the viewer to follow along with what he's saying. I like to caption the majority of the intro section in a nice bold font and then just stick to key sentences throughout. This is equally as important as justifying the click within the first few seconds of your video. If the viewer clicks and doesn't get some sort of confirmation that you're going to deliver on what you promised in the title and thumbnail, they'll click off. This is the rule to follow throughout the whole video. Add as much value as possible and lead everything up to the big payoff at the end. Now we've got our intro sorted, we're going to want to work our way through the rest of the video. You can now calm down a bit with the fast cuts and the constant stimulation of the intro and focus more on pacing and quality of the video. It's okay if the pacing slows down, but we'll have to match that with what I'll cover in the next point, music. Music is incredibly important to making a viral video. It sets the tone and pace for the video and can make or break it. It's important to choose music that fits the pacing and tone of the different sections of your video. I wouldn't recommend using the tacky copyright free music on YouTube and instead use websites like Epidemic Sound where you can find high quality music to fit the tone of the section. You wouldn't use heavy metal for a video about taxes for example, so make sure to really dial in on the intended tone of the video. On these music websites we can also 
find sound effects. Use of sound effects is the part everybody overlooks, but can actually be what maintains the viewer's attention. Let me explain. I was working for a large YouTuber at the time, with over a million subscribers. The channel was growing rapidly, and after a long day, I finished the edit. He strolled in, watched the video through, and said, I want you to spend a few hours adding in sound effects to each and every movement in the video. At the time, I was disappointed that I had to spend time doing this, but then he actually explained why this was. Sound effects bring the viewer's attention back to the screen. If you hear a noise, what do you do? You turn and see what it was. So if a viewer's eyes are drifting from the screen because they're losing attention or getting bored, some interesting sound effects when an asset slides in or when something happens will alert their attention back to your video. We can also keep our video flowing smoothly with J and L cuts. I often watch videos that just seem clunky and cheap. We could use zoom cuts to hide harsh jump cuts, but a lot of the time this only solves 50% of the problem. Let's look at these two clips with a harsh, clunky cut in between. We can add in an L cut, which is where the audio from the first clip carries on into the second clip, or we can add a J cut, which is the complete opposite way around, and is when the audio from the second clip comes in before the visual is shown. Moving on, exactly like the intro, we want to end just as quickly. Whilst we are editing for humans and not algorithms, we're always going to want to bear that retention graph in mind. Now this is super important to make sure viewers don't drop off at the end of the videos we're spending 10 minutes saying like and subscribe, we're going to want to end the video very quickly like this.